created by the poor, stolen by the rich. All those workers all over the country in the 19th and early 20th century that paid their pennies in order to set up a football club which was the centre of their communities, now stolen by the super rich who have no concept of the struggles that went to set up those clubs. When I first heard about the European Super League, I was very angry. Six English clubs, along with others from around Europe, were setting themselves up into a cartel to play exhibition matches against each other with no relegation and no promotion, which would make a huge amount of money for the corporates that were involved in it, would kill off the league system in all those countries that are involved, and would not put more money into grassroots sport and football where it should be. I was very angry, I was very disappointed that Arsenal, my local club, had decided to join in this. And then you think back to the uh, origins of our football clubs, all of them were founded by working class communities. In Arsenal's case it was workers at the Woolwich Arsenal. I wonder how many of that American money that now owns Arsenal are aware of the reasons why Arsenal play in red and white. They couldn't afford to buy shirts. Nottingham Forest was then quite well established and quite well known club. Forest in red shirts are first. They played in red and white, they had a lot of spare shirts, so they sent them to Arsenal. Arsenal stayed playing in red and white ever since. Every other club has a similar kind of history. And then gradually money moved into football and uh, eventually the Premier League was founded. And so we have this fantastic gulf between the Premier League and the rest of it. We would now, if this had gone ahead, had a gulf between the Premier League and the European Super League. But what it's shown is that people do understand when they see big money trying to take over a working class game. And the opposition to it is incredible. That's why the greedy six, as we must call them, have withdrawn but I think it's only temporary. I think it's time to push for real democracy in sport, real democracy in football. None of the German clubs joined. They're all at least 50% fan owned. I think we need to look at the reasons for that and go back to the manifesto that I was proud to put before the public in 2019, which included the election of a fan director on the boards of all clubs and a subvention on all Premier League clubs to put more money into grassroots football. Because football is about young people kicking the ball around, understanding skill, understanding fitness, understanding teamwork. Nobody wins a football match on their own. It's teamwork that does it. So with all the anger there is, and it's huge, against these plans, I think something good has come out of it. And that is a demand for something different in our sporting community. This killing of the Super League idea is a huge victory, but it mustn't stop there. I think a genie has got out of the bottle. A genie of hope of a democratic future in sport. And when we've won that one, I think the lessons about democracy in society, democracy at work, the overwhelming power of the tax dodgers and tax fiddlers to damage our economy, I think there's a big political lesson here as well. What this victory in football has shown is that united, rapidly, people can win. An interim victory because we've stopped a European Super League, but we still have the problems of the big money running FIFA and the big money running the Premier League. And so this has at one level been an argument between the super rich and the rich. It's also got to be an argument between the rich and the people. Support Double Down News on Patreon. Double Down News gives us news as it happens and it gives us the story behind the headlines of the corporate media. Join the future of journalism. Join Double Down News on Patreon.